Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost to the Cathedral, and it's my joy to welcome you to our service this morning on Wednesday, January the 5th. It's the feast day of some of our desert mothers, Sarah Theodora in Syncletica of Egypt. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this feast day. Fix our hearts on you, O God, in pure devotion, that aided by the example of your servants, Sarah, Theodora, and Syncletica, the vain pursuits of this world may have no hold on us, and that by the consuming fire of your spirit, we may be changed into the image and likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the same spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The reading appointed for today is from the book of Proverbs, the ninth chapter beginning at the first verse. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She's mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come. Eat of my bread and drink of the wine I've mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live, and walk in the way of insight. The desert fathers and desert mothers were early Christian hermits, ascetics, and monks who lived mainly in the desert in northern Egypt beginning around the third century AD. These early desert mothers and fathers had a major influence on the development of Christianity and the desert monastic communities became the model for Christian monasticism that has evolved over the centuries and still exists today. Eastern monastic tradition grew at Mount Athos in Greece and the Western rule of Saint Benedict were both strongly influenced by the tradition that began in the desert. They're marked by practices of withdrawal from society, interior silence and continual prayer, charity and forgiveness, and recitation of scripture. I think that all of us who try to go to a deeper relationship with God, yearn for those times set apart, to be still and to know that God is God. And of course, we can go on retreat, and in post-COVID times, we look forward to welcoming more people to come on retreat here at the cathedral at the Center of Prayer and Pilgrimage, and on some of our retreats that are held outside of Washington. It's always an opportunity in the busyness of our lives to turn down the volume, to be silent, to be still, and to be one with God. We're early in a new year, and I encourage you as I try to practice myself to take that time and to practice some of the things that we have learned from these early Christians. Amen. And now I invite you to pray in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. We're just not that far away from Christmas, and I offer to you a beautiful poem by Howard Thurman entitled The Work of Christmas. When the song of angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.